as a child, not only was I interested in stars and space, but I was also interested in archaeology. And I had this idea that archaeologists spend their time hacking their way through the jungle, trying to find you know, ruined cities, great treasures, and the like. And that's part of archaeology. But by and large, finding ruins like this one is the easy part. The hard bit is finding out how old they are. Archaeologists actually spend most of their life finding bits of stone or pottery, bits of wood, trying to date them. Because unless you know how old something is, you don't know who built it, and basically you know nothing. The same sort of issue applies in astronomy. People think that astronomers spend our times surveying the skies, looking for neat stars, galaxies, whatever it might be. And that's certainly part of what we do. But far harder and more important is once we've found something, a little smudge and fuzzy thing, working out how far away it is. Is that smudge a cloud of gas on the edge of our solar system or a giant mega galaxy 10 billion light years away? Unless you know the distance, you know nothing. You don't know how big it is. You don't know how bright it is. So what we're going to do in the next few minutes is talk about two ways in which you can measure distances in astrophysics. So one way to measure how far away something like a galaxy is, is to look at its apparent size. So see, we, here we have two galaxy images, a big looking one and a small looking one. Now you'd pretty obviously think that this one is closer than this one over here. You might even be right. So, a general principle, things that look big are probably closer than things that look far. What's the maths behind this? Well, the first thing to bear in mind is that when you look at something with a telescope or with the human eye, you're not really seeing its size, you're seeing an angle. How does a telescope work? You have a lens and then a detector. So, let's say you've got light coming from some object over here. It's brought to a focus on one point in the detector, whereas light coming from somewhere down here is brought to a focus on another part of the detector. So your pixels on the detector correspond to angles in the sky. So when you see one object in your detector here, one there, you can measure how many pixels there are between them figure in the scale of your telescope, and that will tell you the angle here, the angle subtended between these two sources. So what we really have to work out is how these angles depend on the size and distance of something. Well, let's say we're sitting here on the Earth, and we're looking at something way over here, with a particular length, which might be a galaxy or two stars or something like that. So light from the top and light from the bottom reaches us, and there is some angle theta in here, which is subtended, and that's what we measure with our telescopes or with our eyes. There's a distance r between us and the object, and the object is of length, say, l. So what is the relationship between theta, r, and l? Well, consider an arc of a circle. Some angle here, theta. We have an arc of a circle. In this case, if you went all the way around the circle, be the circumference, which is 2 pi r. But you've only gone a fraction of the way around the circle. All the way around a circle will be 360 degrees, with you've only gone theta degrees. So L is not the full circumference, but a fraction equal to this times theta over 360 degrees. So that's telling us the arc the length here will be a bit less than that, but when you're in a situation like this one, which is what you're always in in astronomy, when your wedge circle is enormously large and the wedge is very, very thin, the difference between a very small arc and a straight line is very, very tiny. So in fact, this is perfectly valid 
for any situation in astronomy. This is the equation in degrees. If you go to radians, it's even simpler. So for radians, L is just equal to R theta. So what does that tell us? It tells us that if you've got an object of a given size and it moves further away, the angle is going to be proportional to 1 over the distance. Actually, it's going to be equal to L over the distance. So if something has an apparent angular size two times smaller, then it must be two times further away. Does this actually work? Well, here are two objects of approximately the same size, me and Brian. We've both gone 10 paces away from the camera, and now Brian is going to continue another 20 paces away. That puts him three times as far away as I am. Therefore, one would expect his angular size, the number of pixels he covers, to be three times smaller. I can measure how big our images are from this frozen frame of the video. And I come out as a whopping 506 pixels from head to toe, whereas Brian comes out as a measly 167 pixels from head to toe. If you take the ratio, divide 506 by 167, you get 3.03. Very close to what we expect, a 3 to 1 ratio, because he's three times further away than I am. So it actually seems to work. So this sounds like a great way to measure distances in space. Just find two objects which you think are the same size, uh, measure their apparent size. If one of them appears to be 10 times bigger than the other, it must be 10 times closer. The trouble, unfortunately, is finding two things which you know are the same size. Look at these two domes, for example. In this image, they both look about the same radius, but in fact, one is small and near, and the other one is big and far away. Here's the small near one with meter scale, and here is the big far away one with meter scale. So if you had two galaxies like this, you could get in deep trouble. And indeed, this is what often happens. Here is an image of the Virgo cluster of galaxies. You can see all these galaxies around here. Here's a big one, and here's a small one. Does that mean the small one is much further away? Well, in fact, they're at the same distance. It's just a big and a small galaxy at the same distance. So while in principle this is a great method to find out how far away things in astronomy, it's also a very dangerous one.